Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this next worked example. We're going to be looking today at the design of an I-beam in shear, a rational and simplified shear design approach, and this is to SANS 101.6 to part one, where possible. Now, looking at the question and just seeing what we're, we need to do. Uh, question, determine the shear distribution in a UB203-13325 section when a shear force 150 kilonewtons applied. And then B, determine the maximum stress when it is assumed that there's a, max, there's a uniform shear stress distribution. So part A will be rational design, part B will be simplified design, and then part C, determine the shear capacity based on the procedure from A, and then the grade is 355JR steel, and we'll be using this throughout and our member properties of a UB2031325 are given here. So, coming through to this, we have a cross-section that looks like that, and we want to determine when a load is applied to the section, what will the shear distribution look throughout um, the cross-section. So, we'll have our load applied there, and what will that do? So, coming back to how we're going to approach this, and with going through this, make sure you've got a copy of the PDF of these notes, and then also make sure your resolution is turned up when watching it so you can see the writing on the screen. Firstly, the load applied, so our ultimate load, our shear load is 150 kilonewtons. When considering a section, the shear stress anywhere in the section based on first principles given by tau equals uh, V times A star times Y bar over I T. There are different ways of writing this simply because of the software I'm using I've written in that way. Often it is written A star times Y bar. I've just simplified it to be as shown here. When doing this, we must remember that the I is the second moment of the entire section whereas the T is per section we consider. So when we run through this, three terms will change depending on where we're looking. Those terms are going to vary depending on wherever we look at. So the second moment of area I and the applied load V are used for all calculations below with um, I equals, and this is the IX um, of our strong axis, and then our V the applied load is simply our ultimate load, which we've been given. We're going to now calculate the stresses at the critical positions. So there's going to be various positions. Firstly, we're going to have a look at the section here, but just in the flange. Then we're going to have a look at it here at the top of the web, and then we're going to have a look at it here, right at the centroid in the middle. And we'll get a shear distribution across the whole section. If we were just trying to calculate what is the maximum stress, we would have a look at the centroid and we could finish the calculation there and then. But since we are having a look at the entire section, we are going to uh, consider these points. I'm going to now flick to the calculations and start going through them. Firstly... At the midpoint of the top flange, only consider the half of the flange to the left, well, or the right, depending. So we now need to calculate the properties for the top. So we're going to have a look here. We want the stress in the flange right at the top. So we're going to isolate this section out and use this property, well, the property of this area I've just highlighted, relative to the neutral axis or the centroid of the section. So this will now become our A star value, and the distance is to the middle of that section from the centroid. So that is to the middle of the se section, and that's the properties we're going to calculate now. And then from that, we can get a stress at that position there. So this is the first one we're looking at. And um, based on that, the A star, so this is the area outside of what we are considering, is simply the width over two times the thickness of the flange. So there's our area. The thickness at the top flange, we're just using the thickness of the flange. 
uh, nothing different. And then the Y bar, so that's the difference from the centroid to the middle of the top flange, is our height over 2 minus thickness of flange over 2, so that gives us the dimension. This is now our shear stress, so that's our applied load times the values I've just calculated. And that gives me a value of 41.5 MPA. So if I come to this um, cross-section and I want to plot the stress in it, I'm going to have something like this. Where this stress here is then our 41.5 MPA. And the same thing will occur on the bottom flan, I mean on the, the other side. We'll also have a stress going from zero um, up to 41.5. Um, because at this point, it's right at the edge of the flanges. It's very difficult for it to, to carry a uh, stress. Typically, you'll see now the bulk of the shear is carried in the web when we do a calculation. I'm just going to now fill in all the um, stress throughout all the flanges. So we've got this. Okay. Now let's then go on to the next position. At the top of the web, um, here, so this will be then the second part, looking at the top of the web. So once again, we're just going to take all this area, and that will now become our A star value. And then once again, our distance from the centroid to that top section, that is our Y bar value, and this we will use for our calculations to get the stress inside the web, and we're taking it to the middle of the, the top section for the calculations. So now swapping back to have a look at what those calculations would look like. At the top of the web, taken at the middle of the flange, use the whole area of flange above which we've just done, hence um, the area of the top outside of the section we're considering is the total width times the thickness of flange. And then now we're into the web. We're not using the flange value in terms of thickness anymore. And then the distance is total distance minus thickness of flange over two, so half of those. So this is the same distance as calculated previously. So it's to the same axis. So our stress now is 113.7. So you can see there's quite a big jump in stress now as it goes from 41.5 to almost 114 MPA from the flange to the web. Now we need to consider our third section, where we're going to calculate the value right at the centroid, right at the middle. So when we do that, we need to consider the entire area outside of the centroid, or beyond it. That would be this entire area. And so the a star value is quite easy because that's just going to be our total area divided by 2. However, the centroid of this is a little bit more difficult to com uh, calculate. If we took away those radii at the co corner, it would be relatively straightforward. We could then just calculate it as the centroid of two plates. However, I'm going to be a bit lazy now. What I'm going to do is just take the properties of a T-section because if we cut a 203-133-25 and half, we can actually find its properties in the red book. So this is the red book here uh, for a T-section. So cut from I-section, 203-133-25. I cut now a 102-133 by 13. And we can actually get the centroid of the section because here's our centroid. It's a distance CX from the top. So that is 21.2 mils. I'm going to draw, um, uh, zoom in just in case. So there is the distance of our centroid from the top. So coming to our diagram. This distance here is now 21.2 millimeters uh, based upon this being a T section, and then uh, we can calculate our Y bar value quite a bit more easily. And so now coming to the calcs, and this is then the third part of our um, calculation, the third position. At the middle of the web, 
um, consider top half of beam above centroid. Hence, for the centroid of the top T section, the centroid shall be calculated by taking the centroid of the 203, 133, um, 13, which is cut from the section. For this T section, the centroid is 21.2 mils from the top. Hence, our area now is just half the total. Our thickness is the web thickness as before, and our Y bar, the distance from the centroid of the entire section to the centroid of our section, is just H over 2 minus the distance we just showed you. And so we get that value, and now we can work out our stress based on that, which is a value of 145 MPa, which means if we look at our diagram, we originally had a stress of 41.5. Now that goes up quite a lot to a value into the, the web of 113.7. at this position here, and then this is increases further to a maximum value at the middle, and then back down to 113 on the far side. Um, so we have a shear distribution like that throughout the cross section. And here, right at the centroid of the section, I'm just going to write it where I've got space, is 145 MPA, and so we've now generated the stress across all the way from 41.5 to 113.7 at the in the web at the top, right down to 145 MPA right at the midsection. So as we expected, the stress at the centroid is the highest, and that gives us the values then. But now coming back to our question. We first had to determine the shear distribution for a specific force of 150 kilonewtons. But now, determine the maximum stress would assume that there's a uniform stress, um, shear stress distribution. This is a lot more straightforward when it comes to the calculations, because all we need to do is assume a um, uniform stress. Um, right, uh, just though... Last thing before going there, though, to the uniform stress, we plotted these stresses on the section above, so we've already done that. As a matter of interest, if the stress calculated um, was based upon the cross-sectional analysis, analysis for Procon Prosec, you'll see that at the end of your notes, the stress would be. So we've used a rational shear design approach, but if we analyze the section in um, uh, Procon Prosec or any other software that can determine the cross-section from a sort of finite element type approach. This is the sort of distribution we'll get. So that's a Y, a shear stress distribution, a torsion stress, warping torsion, and um, X shear stress. So that's a stress in the other direction. We're focusing just on a major axis shear stress distribution. So once again, we can see it's very, um, lower at the flange. It increases from zero along and then increases to a maximum at the middle and then down to the bottom. This output here, the tau max is 966 times e to the negative 6 per millimeter squared. So that's per every um, 1 kilonewton applied. If you multiply every kilonewton applied by that value, you'll get to a stress. The units are a bit misleading, but Looking at that calculation, so just remember it's 966 um, times 10 to the negative 6. If I take that stress from Prosec, 966 times 10 to the negative 6, multiplied it by our ultimate stress, we get 144.9. This is basically the same as we calculated above of 145 previously. So you can see also from a cross-sectional analysis, if you have a shear distribution across it, how you would get from that stress distribution to an actual stress and check it. Now coming back to the second part of the question, if we've got a uniform stress distribution, our uniform shear stress is simply your total load divided by area and shear, and this is then our total height divided by the thickness of web. So we've used this full height and just taken it as the average of that. Now, the only time you neglect those flanges is when, for instance, you have a plate girder. So if I had a plate girder where it was welded sections, I would just use the area in the middle to get the, the value here. Now, moving on to the third part of the question. 
Um, yeah, and just coming back, just to make a quick comment though, uh, before I move on to the third part, the uniform stress is 129.5 MPa. This stress is between what we've calculated here, so 129.5. So by taking that, we can see we are in normal design and simplified design, we calculate a value somewhere between those um, values there. So there we go. That is our total value of 129.5 MPa and such. Okay, now moving on to the final part of this um, question. Determine the shear capacity based on the procedure from A. So using a shear distribution, what, how can we calculate the capacity of this section? Well, firstly, our South African code. For a section, the maximum shear stress must be limited to, and this is from SANS 10162 and section 13.2.4, our maximum shear stress is 0.66 times phi times Fy, where phi is 0.9, and there's our yield stress for 355. Our shear strength is normally about 60 to 66% of our tensile strength, so we, can, we have to limit our shear stress to 210.9. Now, at maximum shear capacity, VR, the applied stress will equal the resistance at the position of maximum stress, i.e. at the middle. So how much can we increase this stress until it hits the 210.9 MPa stress we've calculated? And so if I set my maximum stress equal to my maximum stress at, at uh, the web, at the centroid, so this is just at the centroid, uh, we set those equal to each other, and then we find a term for shear resistance. This is now our maximum shear stress times I times T. If we run through and all those calcs, we'll find our total force we can apply is 218.2 kilonewtons. So that gives us a total capacity. If the resistance was calculated as per standard calculations, however, it would just be this slightly simpler equation, we get 244. So depending if we've done a rational calc, um, limiting stresses, or just an average calc, we'll get a slightly different result, which is fine, it's acceptable. Um, hence, it can be seen that there, there is a difference approach, 218 kilonewton versus 244. The, um, the rational is slightly um, more conservative, but uh, either are feasible. This is the one we normally use. This is much simpler and perfectly suitable. But if we did the detailed calcs, it would come back down to that. So in summary, we've just done, we checked the shear capacity of an I section, looking at first a shear distribution, then a simplified calc, and then based our results upon that. Thank you very much.